as a young citizen of India, armed with technology, knowledge and love for my nation, with a vision of transforming India into a developed nation, I am joining Shobhit University. What about you? Very good morning to all the participants from India and abroad. Shobhit Institute of Engineering and Technology, Meerut, deemed to be university, and it's a center of excellence, a center for agricultural informatics and e-governance research studies, and center for agribusiness and disaster management studies. We extend greetings to all the participants from India and abroad who are attending today's national webinar series on doubling farmers' income by 2022, Atmanirvar Bharat in agriculture. This webinar series is being hosted on every Thursday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And today is 2nd June 2022. The webinar is on very important topic, untapped potential for growth. Let me repeat, untapped potential for growth. How to go about it? Co-create solutions to realize gains for farms, households, and communities. Three actors, farms, households, and communities. So the topic is very important, untapped potential for growth, co-create solutions to realize gains for farms, households, and communities. Let me welcome today's guest speaker to deliver the talk in the 79th edition of this national webinar series, Mr. Amit Kumar Singh. He is the President, Advocacy and Entrepreneurship Development, ICART FinTech, Private Limited, Mumbai, India. For the benefits of the participants and the guest speaker, so far under this webinar series, the university has organized 78 webinars on the topics which are of very important at the grassroots level for doubling farmers' income by 2022 mission. Role of agriculture cooperative societies and e-governance. Blockchain technology-based fishery value chain. Self-contained village, a felt need of the day. Spices informatics network value chain. Landana camera, a camouflaged treasure trove. Smart Hill agriculture, digitalized agriculture value chain. Mara mobile, Mara marketing. Integrated mariculture, aquaponics, and precision agriculture. In short, MAPA biofarms for income revolution. Smart tribal agriculture, optimizing value chains, digital agri-tech in industry perspective, land resources information system in India, present and road ahead. Weather decision technologies for increasing farm income, big data in smart farming, sustainable soil and land management for climate smart agriculture, understanding market dynamics for increasing farm income, role of technologies in mitigating crop risk, how to generate additional profit via simple, attractive approaches in farm produce. Adoption of flexi rubber check dam technology, potential benefits for farmers in rainfed and coastal agro ecosystems. Realizing the economic benefits of agroforestry. Octosol, organic humic solutions for increasing crop yields and quality while increasing farm income and improving soil health. Closing the nutrient loop. Phosphorus management in protein farming, improving nutrient use efficiency and farm productivity. Artificial intelligence enabled pest management technology for agriculture crop protection without pesticides. Empowering farmers through <coughs> extension and knowledge dissemination role of mass media. Smart poultry monitoring solutions. Agrobiodiversity, intellectual property loss, agriculture and farmers welfare and insight into the issues for India's agrarian economy. Manufacture and application of biochar for increased soil fertility and crop productivity. Sustainable integration of livestock <coughs> and agriculture for farm income increase. Role of geographical indications on improving farmers' income lessons from Asia Pacific region. Dairy informatics network value chain, a dairy tech startups perspective for income increase. Spices Informatics Network Value Chain, a turmeric startup perspective for farmer income increase. 
generating sustainable on-farm income through fintech interventions, nutrition-sensitive agriculture, pathway for increasing farmer income, artificial intelligence and data analytics to ensure optimal nutrition in the soil, harvested food that minimizes human diseases. Bioenergy supply chain, a business opportunity for rural enterprises and farmer produce organization. Tech enabling India's tech starved farmers for many fold increase in productivity and income. Open insurance ecosystem for agriculture produce risk management solutions to overcome repercussions on farmers income, market stability and food safety. Role of mass media for farmers income increase, a case study from Green TV. Extract, agriculture stack, open source digital infrastructure for the agriculture ecosystem, a Linux foundation project. Circular bioeconomy towards resilience, urgent need for redefining raw materials and modified waste management policies and regulations. Agri-tech, new horizon in Indian agriculture, supporting of farmers, for market will only help with doubling of income by 2022. Rural transformation for farmers income increase, case studies from impoverished districts. Mobile enabled service software as a service to solve complex supply chain challenges, a case study from daily orders. John Deere's journey in India, integrated precision agriculture solutions, doubling the income of farmers through eco agri solutions, revolution. Bayer's carbon farming initiatives, post-production intervention, maximizing value for farmers, BAFE models of revival of traditional water management systems to enable doubling of farmers' income, should we adopt farmers' welfare as a new paradigm instead of farmers' welfare, ICT intervention in agriculture challenges and opportunities, democratizing the future of farming, a global perspective experience. Commercial processing of orders, next game changer in dairy, data-driven agriculture and agri-tech startups perspective, agribusiness potentials in Moringa, agricultural income pathways, strengthening link between agricultural activities and nutrition outcome, agricultural income pathways, strengthening links between agricultural activities and nutrition outcome, technology, education, research, rehabilitation for the environment, Cultivating dignity for farmers. Modern village development program, a case study from Maharashtra. Market-driven agriculture, need for development of crop-specific strategies at block level. Farmers collective with value addition, powerful business model for income increase for small and marginal farmers. Lessons from Operation Flood for transforming agriculture and food systems. Sustainable food production. Agriculture marketing in India defects therein and remedial measures if any small scale fisheries and their contribution to rural livelihoods case studies from developing countries impacting lives through livelihood promotion and value chain development case study of bruti impact model organic spaces cultivation for doubling of farmer farmers income in northeastern region of india a value chain analysis agriculture exports management imperatives of integrating with the global value chain at the earliest. Agriculture value chain, challenges and opportunities. Dairy husbandry for food security and opportunities. Dairy husbandry for food security and national prosperity. Mushroom cultivation, a way towards self-reliance for agriculture waste and providing nutritional food security to the nation. So, Shubhas Balekar, natural farming, Future of farming rooted in Indian tradition. Vision 2025, agriculture and allied sectors viewpoint. Doubling income of tribal families through value chain intervention and minor forest producer. A case study on custard apple value chain from Udaipur, Rajasthan. Unati agree. Internet in farmlands. Key for prosperous farmers. Jackfruit informatics network value chain. A needed digital infrastructure for increasing farmers income. Doubling of farmers income through integrated agriculture value chain and potential role of minor fruits in achieving nutritional and livelihood security. Fisheries informatics network value chain <coughs> case study from Mancha Technologies. Today is the 79th edition in the national webinar, which will be addressed by Mr. Amit Kumar Singh, President, IACAT Fintech Private Limited, 
Mumbai, India, and the very important topic, untapped potential for growth. Co-create solutions to realize gains for farms, households, and communities. Dear participants, you see the key words, untapped potential, growth, co-creation, solutions, gain resolution, realization, gain re re realization, farms, household, and communities. India is said to be a land of villages. Acharya Vinoba Bhave said, India is largely an agricultural country, Kram Brada, Krishi Pradhan Desh, and a country of villages, Kram Pradhan Desh, more than 6.25 lakhs villages. It is the foundation, agriculture sector is the foundation of Indian economy. It employs more than 50% of India's workforce and contributes almost 19% of its GDP. At present, agricultural livelihoods are being severely impacted world over as a result of anthropogenic global warming and climate change. Climate change has got both direct and indirect effects on agricultural productivity, including changing rainfall patterns, severe drought, flooding and changes in the geographical redistribution of pests and diseases. India's labor-intensive and subsistence-based agriculture sector is particularly vulnerable to this development. Clim climate assigned business is the way forward for Indian, Inca, you know, India Inc. According to the findings of Council on Energy, Environment and Water, its recent climate vulnerability index report, 463 of India's district, according to 2011 census of India, having population of about 916 million people, these districts are extremely vulnerable to climate events, 463 districts, covering 963 million people, you know, vulnerable to climate events. Farmers of India are facing multi-dimensional problems, price fluctuation debt, lack of infrastructure, and women and weather. India farming community comprises of about 14.5 crore operational holdings, of which 85% you know, uh, operational holdings are small and marginal holding size. Farmer needs timely, location-specific, and personalized information for effective control on their production, risk and then market their produce to identified markets. According to Dr. Christopher Barrett, who teaches applied economics and management at Cornell University, USA, he says there are three forms of hunger encompassing half the world now, deepening poverty over generations, undernourishment, Micronutrient deficiency and obesity. And also said COVID-19 has exacerbated, 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 exacerbated global hunger, which is also impacted by strife and climate change. Agriculture extensification into forest and wetlands, having reservoir of genosis has caused 50% of genetic diseases among humans recently. This is according to a report published in Times of India, dated 25th December 2021. Many national level programs, such as Digital India, Make in India, Skill India, Startup India, and Stand Up India, have faced operational difficulties for its impact at farm level and farmer level, that too at small and marginal farmers. I would like to quote our Honorable Prime Minister's speech, which was given on 15th August 2021. He said, I quote, my dream is to see farmers, no, he said that in the coming years, we will have to increase the collective power of the small farmers of the country. We have to give them new facilities. They must become the country's pride. Chota Kisan, Bane Deshke Shan, small farmers become the pride of the nation. That was on 15th August 2021. 
Before that, on 28th February 2016, while addressing a farmer's rally in Bareilly, Uttar Pradesh, he said, "My dream is to see farmers double their income by 2022 when the country completes 75 years of its independence." On 16th April 2022, he said, while addressing in very big conference you know uh, farmers rally in in gujarat he said indian india cannot afford to remain stagnant at this juncture and it has to be self reliant and if people use local goods for the next 25 years the country will not have to face the issue of unemployment i would like to quote the some recommendations from the doubling farmers income committee report which was submitted to the gov- country the government on in september 2018 i was closely associated with this doubling farmers income by 2022 report volume 11 and volume 12 be as associated as group leader volume 11 talked about empowering the farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination and volume 12 be even though it is a volume 12 is science and technology for doubling farmers income but 12b is digital technology in agriculture i i am thankful to the chairman of the committee dr ashok dalwai to separate from volume 12 and make it as volume 12b you know it is a great acknowledgement of my contribution to the committee report digital technology in agriculture it suggests seven mission mode programs to bring in digitalization of indian agriculture this is from the vast experience of which i had in working with the government at the grassroots level from 1987 onwards number 1 digital digitalized agriculture digital technology and innovation in agriculture synergization of digital india make in india skill india stand up india programs and start up india programs for transformational reforms in agriculture sector through smart rainfed farming smart irrigated farming and smart tribal farming digitalized agromet advisories and agricultural risk management solutions and digitalized agricultural resources information systems and micro level planning for achieving smart village and smart farming i was the member secretary of the task force on agricultural resources information system way back in 2002 and this report is gathering dust in the government and that's why this recommendation digitalized agricultural resources information system and micro level planning for achieving smart village and smart farming digitalized value chain for about 400 agriculture commodities digitalized access to inputs technology knowledge skill agricultural finance credit marketing and agri business management to farmers integrated digitalized integrated land and water management systems per drop more crop and digitalized farm health management for reduction of farmers loss this is this is very important integrated farm health means people health plant health animal health soil health water health fish health and environmental health it is a trillion dollar data economy it is a vertical generates data and nobody has developed algorithms to work on these data on a location specific and see this you know the repercussion of the disease if this is done so hereafter india need not go for lockdown for that matter the whole world and doubling of income farmers committee report also suggested networking of all cooperatives and the digitalization of each cooperative under the name coopnet and e cooperatives this is also very important it says that need for a development of a network of cooperative societies and automation of each cooperative society to facilitate governance and operational efficiency in the cooperative sector is good for rural india and this is very important and with respect to this seven mission mode programs and this recommendation and today's topic is very important today's topic can completely reorient and try to bring in lot of startups to realize this recommendation of the doubling farmers income committee for uh, you know 
digitalization of Indian agriculture system in a very effective manner. Atmanirbar Bharat is the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister of India for making the nation self-reliant, rested on five eyes intent, investment, infrastructure, inclusion, and innovation. Based on five pillars, quantum jumping economy, not incremental. Infrastructure, one that represents modern India through PM Kadi Shakti program, one lakh crore investment. And systems 21st century technology driven and vibrant demography, sources of energy for self-reliant India. And demand whereby the strength of our demand and supply chain should be utilized to the full capacity. And also that vocal for local to make it make India global. These reforms has been systematic, planned, integrated, interconnected, and futuristic for creating strong enterprises. Strong enterprises, whether it is small, micro, medium, business or enterprises, generating employment and robust supply chain. This is our intent. And in the third trench of Atmanirvar Bharat Abhiyan, Amit. Uh, Atmanirvar Bharat Agriculture received about 1.5 lakh crore as a booster. 1 lakh crore to agriculture cooperative societies and farmer producer organization and startup for boosting farm gate technologies, the infrastructure. 10,000 crores for formalization of micro food enterprises. Formalization of micro food enterprises. PM F MF, MFE and for following cluster based farming approach, cluster based agro marine cluster processing and agro crop processing cluster. And then 20,000 crores for PM Matsya Sambada Yojana. Previous one is that you know PM you know Kisan Sambada Yojana. And and 13,000 crores to achieve 100% vaccination of cattle, buffalo, sheep, sheep, goats, and pigs. And 15,000 crores for animal husbandry infrastructure. And 4,000 crores for promotion of herbal cultivation to cover 10 lakh hectare and herbal, herbal cultivation. And 500 crore for beekeeping infrastructure. And as per the report on 22nd June 2020, Indian food processing sector is an untapped growth opportunity. Untapped growth opportunity. And, you know, <clears throat> and we also have now Amrit Call led up to 100 for the next 25 years of perspective plan what India should achieve. It is with a vision that complementing the macroeconomic growth focus with a microeconomic level growth focus, inclusive of welfare focus, promoting digital economy, fintech, technology enabled development, energy transition, and climate action. And then relying on virtuous cycle, restarting from private investment with public capital investment, helping to crowd in private investment. And then we have sustainable development goals of the UN and Agenda 2030, 17 goals and 169 targets to be achieved to have the future we want. Value chain development brings in all stakeholders engaged in production system on a common platform. Today we'll have a common platform which our guest speaker, Mr. Amit Kumar Singh, will talk about it to contribute their best while ensuring fair deal and transparency. Stakeholders involved in post-production activities, involved in post-production activities are the agencies organizing collection, trading, storage, transportation, processing, and marketing of the produce. But in the pre-production and other areas, the value chain includes input suppliers, technology delivering agencies, Scientists indirectly engaged in developing appropriate technologies and extension offices who are involved in capacity building and providing various services to the farmer. T 
taking a holistic and market driven view of the entire value chain from consumer to supplier creates the right environment for sector wide development and we also have to integrate with the global value chain then only will be in a position to have an untapped potential for the growth national value chain and the global value chain india itself is about more than 36 countries of size population culture eating habits 127 agroclimatic zone 400 and more than 450 commodities india has got 365 days sunshine and we can grow food for the whole world for 365 days if they are processed with our brands india can feed the whole world and indian farmers need not be a poor people they'll be the wealthiest people and and indian agriculture export policy 2018 also talks about that striving to double the india share in the world agriculture export by integrating with the global value chain at the earliest so in this regard in this two webinar series which the soviet institute of engineering and technology deemed to be university which conduct two webinar series in every week on thursday national webinar series and doubling farmers income by 2022 to attract agriculture startup ngos in the sec sectoral industry and so on so forth academicians research scholars and traders and so on and so forth and international webinar series on open source digital technology for self-reliant india in association with our asia african asian rural development organization ardo which has got headquarters at new delhi various related topics which we had it in the international webinar series on open source digital technology seizing opportunities in open innovation and the value creation network in the digital world for self-reliant economy today's topic is very important seizing opportunities in open innovation and value creation network in digital world for self-reliant economy technology investment in agriculture value chain role of foreign direct investment and somebody said it foreign direct investment means farmer dominated infrastructure and leveraging emerging technologies for ensuring transparent and traceable agri and food supply chain digital agriculture supply chain and trading hub a geo-economic perspective in open agri network to unlock the trillion dollars plus potential of indian agriculture with the small smallholder farmer leveraging rural entrepreneurship to ensure doubling of farmers income leveraging the power of convergence through connecting the dots agri startups agripreneurs and rural innovators commodity value chain creation through agri network and agri ai farm to plate one stop agri tech platform to simplify supply chains and e governance needs of food and perishable commodities role of agricultural cooperative societies and e governance blockchain based technology value chain agriculture commodity value chain integrated mariculture aquaponics and precision agriculture small scale fisheries and their contribution to their livelihoods agriculture export management imperating for integrating with the global value chain agriculture value chain challenges and opportunities doubling farmers income through integrated agriculture value chain by dr sudhir kumar goel sudhir kumar goel ias retired farmer additional chief secretary government of maharashtra potential role of minor produce in achieving nutritional livelihood security fisheries informatic network value chain case study from manja technologies untapped potential for growth co-create solutions to to realize gains for farms household and communities national commission on farmers title serving farmers and saving farming 2006 this report considered 2006 as the year of agricultural renewal in india this is popularly known as yama swaminathan commission report today is 2022 it talks about 
enhancing small farm productivity and increasing small farm income through crop livestock integrated production systems and multiple livelihood opportunities through agro processing and biomass utilization are essential both to meet food production targets and for reducing hunger poverty and rural unemployment and doubling farmers income by 2022 was announced in 2016 10 years the country has given from 2006 to 2016 it has given a holiday youth and agriculture key challenges and concrete solution i would like to quote from un fao report 2014 this is in collaboration with CTA, that is Cent Technical Center for Agricultural Rural Co Cooperation and International Fund for Agricultural Development. It says it's more relevant. Rural youths are the future of food security. Rural youths are the future of food security. Yet around the world, few young people see a future for themselves in agriculture or rural areas. Well, most of the world's food is being produced by aging smallholder farmers in developing countries. Older farmers are less likely to adopt new technologies. It is a true statement. Needed to sustainably increase agricultural productivity and ultimately feed the growing world population while protecting the environment. And therefore, we need to re-engage youth in agriculture. This is the report of FAO 2014. Another UN Department of Economics and Statistics Agency's report, brief. It talks about we have to invest in future of in the we have to invest in the future of rural non-farm economies. It's very important because empirical evidence and historical evidence justifies thinking of rural development not as an appendage of urban progress, but as a driver and integral part of the national development. And it talks about agriculture transformation through higher, higher productivity and value chain. In the India, we have identified about 450 agriculture commodity value chain, including livestock and fisheries. That, starting from subsistence, to commercialization and modernization. And then illustration of linkages among household, farm, and non-farm sectors. It very nicely talks about input to technology, agricultural research, transportation and healthcare, farm and non-farm income, agricultural product market, and growth of non-farm activities and, and human capital. And it is a time to look into the human capital needed for rural in India's growth. This is where Soviet Institute of Engineering, a private university in the whole, you know, it's the first in kind in the whole world that to have five centers of excellence to generate the necessary human capital for rural India's growth. Today, I would like to have a case study from a previous organization of Mr. Amit Kumar Singh, who was still recently was the country's representative. Tonight, I was quite impressed. That's why I thought that this, you know, this Indian, you know, India should listen to this, you know, the mission and mission. We need umpteen number of tonnages in, for this country, headed by Mr. Amit Kumar Singh. It talks about Tanager and its present organization, ACDI, Oblique VOCA, have taken time to understand what communities need and how they can help in more than 100 countries across Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East. Business want reliable supply chain, reliable supply chain, and capable workforce. Smallholder producer and youth want opportunities in the global economy. They align interest to co-create shared so co-create shared solutions that to overcome market challenges and unleash the untapped potential in supply chain untapped supply chain potential in supply chain 
that's what in the other international webinar an expert from australia talked about achieving this untapped potential through agro net and agri ai to you know bridge the hole which is available and together tanagers connect analyze and implement market solutions connect analyze and implement market solutions that benefit buyers producers and workforces as well as their families and communities how beautiful it is it is on the ground and the person who headed that organization in india is going to talk to you today what do you mean by co-creation creating a world where people can improve their lives is what the tanager says what we do the work we do why we do the work we do people may ask the question why are you doing this work they say that we wanted to create a world where the people can improve their lives tanager believes there is a great untapped potential for growth and so who co create solutions to realize gains from farms household and communities every partnership project and activity bring about life changing economic opportunities life changing economic opportunities it means not only output but it's a outcome and impact oriented it helps the small holder farmers producers profit in the global economy they see to that saw to that they get integrated with the global economy helping them improve the quantity productivity production and quality of their yields to meet the buyer's specification you produce what the market need not what my grandfather used to continue to produce i will continue to do that tanager provides a full range of services to co-create healthy service markets that benefit all participants connect analyze and implement connect analyze and implement clients know clients their clients know they can count on tonages to keep their word and see things through in a global economy today's biggest challenges tonager website courts complex and interconnect today's because the in the global economy today's biggest challenges are complex it is not simple but interconnected business want strong and the reliable supply chain it is not disconnected and no connection producers want opportunities to participate in the global economy teenagers tanager aligns interest to co-create and solutions that overcome market challenges and unleash the untapped potential in supply chain now mr amit kumar saying is now the president of iacart fintech solution what that you know you know solutions gave there you know they this is the india's first digital platform strengthening traditional business and agriculture value chain they are overlapping agriculture value chain over the traditional you know business with they are helping the with the finance technology and service they have filled up bridged the all the holes which are available in this you know in this value chain and as a 360 degree solution their website says this organization addresses the needs of producer farmer collectives manufacturers producer distributor retailer and consumer while beginning my talk i said it that i was quite impressed by the mission and vision of tanager in which mr amit kumar singh was the president worked as a country representative and now he is working is a is working in an organization of president their vision and mission of both the organizations are almost the same as far as i am concerned that's why i requested him to use the topic to deliver the talk with the case studies and another report of india international labor organization says 
rural women entrepreneurship is good business micro and small enterprises offer a number of particular advantages for rural women cooperatives are a predominant form of sustainable enterprise for women and rural areas according to the website growth of msmes have become a top priority in india and there are about 63 million non agricultural msmes out of which you know they create about 1100 111 million jobs and about 38.718 millions are in in trade and 36.22 millions are in services now this one integrated platform one start platform they are taking a traditional you know you know <clears throat> business traditional you know business they are strengthening the traditional business with agriculture value chain strengthening the traditional business with the 450 agriculture value chain in the country you can see from 5 years from now where india will be and we want to achieve it we want to walk that is the vision and mission of the soviet institute of engineering and technology through its centers of excellence center for agricultural informatics and e government research studies and center for agri business and disaster management studies with this introduction let us now turn to the address of mr amit kumar singh president iacat fintech private limited on a very important topic and tap to potential for growth co create solutions to realize gains for farms household and communities today topic will motivate and galvanize the participants watching over telecast through facebook.com oblique sobit university india youtube.com oblique sobit university in or linkedin.com oblique sobit company oblique sobit dash university for establishing SMEs are startups on integrating value chain through digital platform iCart. India's first integrated digital platform strengthening traditional business and agriculture value chain with finance, technology and services leading to platform economy in agriculture value chain at gram panchayat level. This is our intention, intent to promote and sustain vocal for local to make it global. This is very appropriate to court what mr amit singh said while taking over the pres- this present position he said which is quoted in the newspaper he said that my vision of building and developing businesses by encouraging the adoption of advanced technology in this surging digital wave in in the in this surging digital wave aligns with that of iacat i will ecstatic ecstatic i feel ecstatic to have this opportunity and leverage my experience to empower the small businesses retailers farmer produce organizations to optimize their business and take them to a larger scale my focus will be to enhance the experience of stakeholders across the segments and analyze the supply chain to revamp the traditional business technologically and financially for better outcomes let us unlock the opportunities in india at the earliest to so as to facilitate 14.5 crore operational farm holdings out of which 85% are small and marginal farmers and also about 450 agriculture value chain let me introduce the guest speaker to the audience mr manish mr amit kumar singh is currently the president of iacat fund fintech private limited mumbai since april 2022 iacat is the india's first integrated fintech platform caters to the food and agri value chain as a connected msme supply chain ecosystem with the finance technology and services prior to joining iacat mr amit kumar singh worked as country representative tanager india from july 2013 to february 2022 program director agri business systems international june 2011 to june 2013 lucknow area india program manager acdi oblique voca india september 2009 to june 2011 state coordinator micro enterprises development mp rural livelihood project tfid sponsored project june 2008 to august 2009 national expert united nation industrial development organization unidev 
June 2006 to May 2008, and project coordinator consultant, you know, March marketing and research team, May 2004 and 2016. Mr. Amit Kumar Singh has over 20 years of experience in leading large development programs with multidisciplinary teams. Sound knowledge of processes and reporting systems of international development organization over a decade of experience in establishing and managing foreign branch office for implementing multi-donor funded programs with a special focus on gender integration, nutrition, and social inclusion. He has got expertise in value chain analysis, sectoral needs assessment, stakeholders analysis, cluster oblique sector development plans and institutional strengthening with proven conceptualization, presentation, and negotiation skill. He has got built-in ability to work in challenging environments and inclusive growth, institutional capacity building, and a holistic set of invest intervention. Mr. Amit Kumar Singh has, a good, has, has good public speaking skill and participated as panelist, oblique speaker in many enforcement conferences, seminars of national and international repute. With this, I welcome Mr. Amit Kumar Singh to the today's national webinar series on doubling farmers' income by 2022, Atmanirvar Bharat in agriculture to address untapped potential for growth, co-create solution to realize gains for farms, households, and communities. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Moni. Uh, you talked a lot about you know the uh, problems, the initiatives. Those are on the policy level. Uh, I'll focus more on the practical aspect. What I have learned <clears throat> during my, uh, you know, experience of working directly with the farm community, <clears throat> and uh, uh, what challenges I faced, how uh, I could mit mitigate the challenges with the help of the team, and uh, what do I think, you know, how this problem can be solved or uh, how we can double the income <clears throat> of the farmers. So, uh, you know, I heard you, you know, you talked about so many schemes, so many investment, so many things uh, happening around, you know, the agriculture and its allied sector. But why, uh, then why we need uh, this intervention? Why we need to double the farmers' income? That question always comes in everyone's mind. So, let me tell you one thing. Uh, I think five years back, I was involved in a, a study called uh, uh, Living Income Benchmark, where you know we saw that you know the uh, farmers' income uh, ranges between sixty thousand two hundred twenty thousand uh, INR, and uh, that is not sufficient to uh, lead a decent life where you can have a decent education for your children. You can have a decent uh, you know living space. Uh, safe drinking water, uh, nutritious food, as per the requirements. So many uh, problems, you know, the farmers they face <coughs> uh, to lead a good life. So they are really struggling, uh, despite the fact that they are feeding the entire world. Uh, they are ensuring food security. Uh, uh, if you look at the agriculture growth for, of last two decades, it was close to three to three point one percent. Against the population growth of 1.2 to 1.3 percent, so still that we are above all. But uh, you know, does that uh, uh, result or achievement, uh, you know, uh, suffice the need of the farmers? No, they are you know the biggest uh, uh, disadvantageous position, uh, and this is a time. Uh, when everything is changing, Prime Minister is taking everything on a mission mode. And I think uh, this is biggest, uh, this is high time where, uh, you know, the ecosystem is building up around agriculture. Uh, people, they have intention to uh, invest in agriculture. They are giving importance to nutritious food, especially after, you know, the uh, pandemic, uh, which took the toll of the life in the last two years. People they realized how important food is. Earlier, you know, we never realized how digital uh, uh, revolution is important. How food is in nutritious food is important. How life is important. 
So the pandemic has shown the way how we should uh, uh, move ahead uh, and giving importance to agriculture. And uh, in recent uh, time also, you see the uh, Russia and Ukraine war. So world is now realizing uh, that uh, every country has to focus a, you know, in agriculture and its allied uh, uh, sector to ensure the food security of their own countrymen. Because, you know, the wheat prices, uh, the uh, paddy prices gone, you know, so high, much above the minimum support price due to, uh, you know, high demand of, you know, export, uh, uh, you know, from other countries. And uh, you might have seen how, you know, Indonesia, uh, you know, initially banned um, the palm oil and the, uh, the cooking oil uh, prices were... Uh, going high so uh, we'll you know to feed the countrymen to keep the inflation under control and to strengthen the rural economy and contributing to the overall gdp we need to give importance to agriculture and that can happen only when farmers they remain in farming and that is possible when their income increases they also lead a decent life they <clears throat> their children get a better education they uh, can also afford you know all the necessities of the life and they are no more you know called as a poor farmer rather than you know they still they can get you know that uh, uh, you know we can uh, remember that uh, slogan jai jawan jai kisan so that jai kisan uh, is very important if we want uh, a sustainable future for our coming generation so <clears throat> without wasting time i'll come to uh, you know the presentation uh, Is it visible now? No, it is not yet. I think I'll have to close that window. It will take some time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it is getting uploaded. So, uh, Professor, you gave a very good insight. You know, I learned a lot from your uh, iteration today, <clears throat> and uh, you have a you have got a good hold on. You know what's happening you have worked a lot uh, in agriculture domain <clears throat> so uh, i'll come to uh, the problem the practical problems that that you know because there are two aspects you know there are two perspectives the two lenses we can look at it one is a macro one another is micro so i have you know the all, although if you talk about the problems in agriculture it will take an entire day <clears throat> And that will also not be sufficient. So I'll uh, I have tried my level best to uh, cut it short so that you know the audience can get a you know good insight into it. So I'll you know I'll start with the farm level problems. You know you have seen you, and your uh, first slide is uh, you know disappeared immediately. You can for the benefit of continuity you can go to the first slide and then start. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yes, I was talking about the problems at farm. So, uh, when I started working with the farmers, I tried, you know, I uh, the, I was lucky that I could work as a grassroots, uh, at grassroots level, at policy level, planning level. And uh, 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 I have worked with the donors, I worked with the government, I have worked with NGOs, foundations. So I have got different perspective and I, you know, I have analyzed uh, from those learnings of the past. So, you know, farmers, why the, the profit, you know, there is a declining profit. So there are uh, multiple reasons, you know, productivity is decreasing. Uh, there is a high cost of cultivation. There is a high post harvest losses. And as, as per one of these estimate, you know, the post harvest losses which happens in perishables in india you know uh, in many countries that is the consumption so you can think of the level of 
the uh, post harvest losses that is happening due to lack of the, you know the infrastructure due to, due to lack of technology due to lack of extension services so you know what farmers they actually they need they need you know some kind of advisory some kind of you know the consultation uh, we as a professional also we we need many a times consultation guidance hand holding support to uh, conduct our day to day business and uh, let me tell you in 20 years of my journey i i got you know mentorship from many of my seniors many of you know the technocrats bureaucrats and and i felt you know like me uh, i got the education then also i i i, I needed that those services so why can't you know why should not the farmers because until unless they get a good advisory services because what how you know the the skill the farming <laughs> skill that gets uh, transmitted uh to the next generation you know from fathers to you know for four fathers to father to the next generation and if you look at you know the 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 kind of traditional practices still exist farmers they are losing interest because they are not able to recover the cost they are putting in they are simply you know sometimes they are not able to even the recover the uh, the cost of family labor so that is the, the you know most dangerous situation and if you ask a farmer that do you want your son to become farmer he says no or, or she says no why why this situation has come because the farming has uh, not remained you know as a profitable uh, business because we are not the farmers they're not treating farm you know farming as a business and that is not the fault of the farmers but the fault of the ecosystem and 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 the lack of infrastructure you know Uh, why there is a high post harvest losses because there's no cold chain there's lack of you know uh, sufficient number of warehouses where farmers can keep their produce and sell it when when they realize the better price so when they uh, go to the mandi many of the times they don't they are not able to recover the cost of the transportation and they leave it as it is and they run away from there because they don't have the money to pay to the transporter so that's you know the case many a times you might have heard in the news that uh, you know they thrown away the tomatoes or, or the milk on the road so that is happening why there's a lack of you know proper planning there's a lack of uh, uh, you know lack of proper coordination between different stakeholders <clears throat> then i'll come to the volatile market the prices are very volatile because there is you know there's no uh, you know there's a mismatch between supply and demand somewhere these uh, you know production is so high but if you look at the demand demand is all over you know the country but there is no uh, you know proper mechanism where the produce can be distributed pan india and and farmers they get a better margin in the consumer's price their maximum margin in consumer's price on an average is 25 to 30% whereas they they invest uh, all the money they take the entire risk then also they are they are not making profit they are at loss <clears throat> then i talked of you know the the disrupted uh, ecosystem the ngos yes they are doing good work uh, like you said earlier about the my last organization similarly pradhan feed trif lot many organizations the foundations they are working uh for you know enhancing the income of the farmers but those are in bits and pieces <clears throat> similarly government has taken up many initiatives <clears throat> to double the farms uh, farm income uh you know like the initiative like you know uh, more crop per drop so those are in mission mode but why this is not, why there is no large scale or significant impact on 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 the farmers <clears throat> because everybody is working in silos and one thing is uh, very pertinent on and definite that nobody no one you know individual organization or person can do a, everything in this ecosystem there has to be some kind of partnership there has to be some kind of coordination there has to be some kind of match making so that you know there is a integrated approach and the entire ecosystem can be integrated well to bring about you know bring about a large significant 
large scale impact <clears throat> on the lives of the farmers so uh, that is about you know the ecosystem then government policy people they many a times they get confused between the state subject and the central subject uh, and some in some state states, <coughs> feel you know the old apfc act exists where farmers they're not allowed they're not allowed to sell their produce outside the mandi whereas some of the states they have amended the apmc act law you know long back like you know andhra in 2006 bihar they scrapped the uh, their apmc act <clears throat> so different states they have a different policy there has to be a uniform policy there has to be a national brand like you know uh, the milk uh, <clears throat> just imagine <clears throat> you know the operation flood one and two and the investment from the government and the private sector that brought about this white revolution and there is a brand called amul and which is competing with all the international brand and and they are making profit so there has to be some kind of national branding fruits also vegetables also we are a largest producer of many fruits and vegetables in the world but <clears throat> just imagine what is happening you know india can become a vegetable hub for entire uh, globe so those are the potentials uh, that we have but problem still exists <clears throat> we'll have to think from you know those lines so that you know uh, we are able to come out with a good solution and 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 create an impact on the lives of the farmers <clears throat> i'll talk about some of the data which uh, you know the uh, farm level data if <clears throat> if you look at the farm level data so as i said the the there is a lack of productivity why there is a lack of productivity because farmers they don't have access to quality inputs they have they don't have access to you know the proper advisory services uh, you know like, uh, like what what to spray what not to spray during the incidence of pests and diseases so they don't don't know what to do under such situation if there is a rain although the uh, the climate uh, related data is now there a lot of accuracy has come uh, farmers they're getting those kind of information but what they'll do if there is a uh, if uh, it's uh, you know there is a rain what they'll do if the temperatures are much uh, beyond uh, the threshold level what they should do uh, what crop they should take up uh, under different climatic zones uh, what uh, cash crop they should include to get uh, more uh, cash income so those kind of services are not available that's why you know the productivity is decreasing and one of the reason two main reasons are the quality uh, seed and the quality uh, advisory on good agricultural practices then i'll come to the technology so world has adopted you know the the india is the only country where farmers they still uh, you know practicing the traditional system of farming but you know we 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 should think of how the ai artificial intelligence can work you know so that their work become easy they also find it more uh, interest in agriculture and uh, uh, technology can you know upgrade the value chain they you know technology can uh, decrease the cost of cultivation technology can decrease the post harvest losses technology can bring about change in the packaging system they can, it can increase the self life of the produce and farmers can realize better price <clears throat> i talked about the extension services uh, many of the time uh, i have seen you know the uh, extension those persons who are responsible for extension services they are they have they they are assigned different jobs of collecting data information so many things they are involved in other than the you know the main subject of agriculture even the kind of information they have they are outdated and uh, uh, in this world of you know the in this digital world we can think of how government can use the digital platform as i cart you know they they are they have come up with their i krishi app where farmers can get you know the digital uh, you know they, they can get the extension services through digital way so so many organizations are working in this domain 
but you know there's no as i said there's no integrated approach so everybody is doing in bits and pieces but if some platform is uh, that comes or government takes some initiative where you know every all the knowledge that has been gathered or or the intervention uh, interventions which is happening can be you know brought under one platform so there can be a super app or super you know the digital platform where you know farmers can opt for you know the best services uh, on a paid basis and and then only i think uh, uh, this system of extension can will improve everything can we cannot depend uh, you know on government for everything private sector has to come because when if you uh, talk of the you know the uh, companies producing you know the pesticide chemicals seed they are confined to their own uh, you know the product only they they do extension they do demonstration in the villages but of their product and farmers they get confused which uh, you know uh, pesticide to use which seed to use there's no regulation on it so that's the biggest problem so retailers being a retailer they 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 go for a you know the chemical or pesticide where they get the maximum margin but they never think of the the environment they never think of you know the other health issues that that you know brings uh, impact you know you have seen there's a train from punjab you know, you know cancer train which uh, runs from punjab so how farmers you know taking the toll of you know taking the heat of all these you know the bad practices which needs to be corrected in coming time <clears throat> the market uh, whenever you know i talk to uh, you know the ngos or the implementing agencies or or the government people working for farmers if you talk to them they'll say oh market is the, is the problem and everything uh, uh, is on place but you know uh, in we have a population of more than 135 crores and i think there will always be a demand but we need to think of you know what is demanded in the market what the farmers are supplying there's a you know mismatch between demand and supply that is that is the main problem problem is not the market problem is are our farmers market ready no i say no because they are still practicing the traditional farming system they are still taking up the crops they feel comfortable sometimes they get the you know jackpot like in onion and potatoes and tomatoes and prices are high but they incur a huge loss when prices fall below you know uh, a critical level because sometimes tomatoes they they don't get you know uh, they get 2 rupees less than 2 rupees for potatoes 5 rupees onion 5 rupees sometimes it is 40 rupees 100 rupees so just see you know the price fluctuation why this is happening because you know if there is a good price in this year in the preceding season farmers you know will take up more area so this is called in 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 you know uh, the, the in price depression you know so this circle will go on go on you know and until unless farmers when they'll incur huge loss they'll again either they'll quit that particular crop or they will allocate lay, less acreage for that particular crop so that's also the problem market is not the problem whatever will be produced will be sold in the market and is being sold but why it is not happening why there is a loss why farmers they're not able to sell their produce because we don't know what is the actual demand in a particular mandi or in a particular area <clears throat> but if if you look at the macro picture still you'll see you know the the supply is less demand is more but if you take a micro look you will see somewhere there is a surplus somewhere there is a deficit so those kind of mismatch has to be removed and that can happen when we have a good you know data informatics system we have a good analytics and the information is uh, available in the public domain and to the policy makers so that can make good policies around agriculture <clears throat> i talked about high post harvest losses when they harvest the produce it reaches you know the farm gate so farmers they never they do you know go for sorting 
upgrading, cleaning, which can face them a better price because they are in a hurry to get cash because everything, all the inputs they have purchased is on credit. So they need to pay off the debt. And in that hurry, they do not go for those kind of practices. That is one reason. Second is there's no common facility center or there's no collection center. And, and there is a lack of, uh, you know, there's a lack of access to these kind of information or this kind of kind of post harvest technologies, which can reduce the losses, which can increase the price relation for the farmers. So there are, you know, these small practices, like if we talk of the cabbage and the cauliflower. So instead of using, you know, the, the iron sickle, if farmers, they use the fiber sickle, so there will not be, a, you know, the, the, the mark on the the, uh, uh, the cauliflower and cabbage, they will have a better self life if they apply, you know, wax over it, if they wrap it uh, with, a, you know, the, the small, uh, you know, the um, poly paper, they can fetch a better price. Uh, the post harvest losses will get reduced. So these are small, uh, you know, uh, intervention that are needed. Not, this is not a rocket science, which is needed to you know reduce these losses so but again so who will transform this knowledge to others because every organization is doing their experiment they're working in silos but those information are either are being not shared or uh, they don't get disseminated there's no platform like you have created this platform many of the audience they might have you know might be listening to me and might reach out to you to get this kind of technologies and we are happy to provide them you know this small intervention then the quality inputs i have already talked so if you know uh, for instance you know farmers they grow paddy wheat but they don't grow basmati they they don't grow hybrid rice where they can harvest a better uh, produce but they're not doing it in, in uh, uh, you know, I have worked in, uh, you know, the mint uh, uh, industry for, I think, seven to eight years. And what I have realized, you know, using a good seed material, you know, you can increase the productivity by more than 50 to 100 percent. So I have in, in pa I have the past experience where farmers, they have increased their income by 150 percent, but just using the good seed material the good agricultural practices so these are small intervention nothing you know the, it's not a big science that needs to be uh, given to them one of the most important factor is you know the ratio of extension to the farmers so israel why israel is so far ahead from other countries in terms of the productivity because they have the ratio of you know 250 farmers per extension officers but if you look at our scenario i don't know what is the ratio but it must be very low low because we have one kvk per district and that is also not sufficient you know uh, for a population in a district from five to seven lakh farmers uh, you know minimum and you have one uh, kvk how they will cater to those many number of farmers so forget about the extension uh you know the agents or the officers so those kind of things we need to think of and you uh, look at, you know, the the uh, the data which I have presented, how, you know, the farmers, they are uh, debt ridden, how, you know, the small plots that, you know, <clears throat> uh, uh, how the allocations are, uh, you know, making the uh, life of the farmers difficult because <clears throat> we'll have to think from both from the macro as well as the micro angle. In micro angle, I think NGOs, the foundations, <clears throat> they can play a major role in the macro picture. Government can come in and private sector can both participate in macro as well as micro, helping government to mitigate the macro problems and helping the NGOs, foundations to mitigate, you know, the solve the problems at the micro level. So uh, I'll, I, I think I, I talked much about the infrastructure in, in, in my last uh, <clears throat> uh, slide, but still, you know, uh, 
uh, as I said, there is a problem of storage. In many of the uh, crops, already government has done some experiment on warehouse receipt. Because if I am a farmer, I grow paddy or I grow potato, I need a cold chain or I need a warehouse so, so that I can store my produce when there will be a lean season, you know, I'll, I'll prefer to sell the produce <clears throat> at a better price, but that is not happening. If you look at the storage capacity versus, you know, the production capacity uh, or the production uh, data of the country, there's a huge gap. So <clears throat> we, we need to have more and more warehouses and that too, uh, uh, at, you know, very close to village level, very close to the farm so that farmers, they don't incur much cost on transportation and market can move close to the villages uh, rather than the villages they move to the market so that that problem can be solved if we can have proper warehouse cold chain cold chain again you know uh, if you look at the uh, you know current food habits they're changing people they have low you know the the incline, inclination towards cereals and other staples is going down people there they want more and more processed vegetables you know the nutritious food so there are many food chains that are coming up but uh, they are facing problem in sourcing why because of you know lack of cold chain how the the produce will get transported to their location because the food chains are in the urban areas the big cities metro cities but how it will reach from the rural area the remote area to you know the those uh, you know the uh, food chains so that is one of the problem because recently while working in icart i realized you know there is a demand from many food chains for you know exotic vegetables processed vegetables and we want to do it with the farmers but the problem is if we do it at the farm level how will transport those processed vegetables from the farm gate to the you know the food chains located in metro cities big cities that that are you know far away from those areas so uh, we need to think of you know uh, both government as well as private sector needs to join hand to invest in the cold chain so that there is a freezer van uh, although government has recently started uh, dedicated you know the wagon for the uh, uh, agriculture produce uh, but i think uh, every area doesn't have that kind of you know local railway station where you know that those things can be uh, lifted off and can reach on time to the uh, destination so we need to have more freezer vans more cold chains a better planning of you know the inventory and and the route so that you know <clears throat> it can reach to the destination if you know the the app like ola and uber can come in the transportation freezer van farmers they can you know <clears throat> uh, choose which you know uh, you know which uh, services are best which are affordable services so that so that you know their network organization like fpos the producer enterprises sgs they can transport you know they can send their uh, processed uh, you know and perishable items to you know distantly located uh, food chains so <clears throat> that that piece is very important if you want to increase farmers income then uh, as i said the post harvest facilities <clears throat> if you talk of mangoes <clears throat> majority of the mangoes they are being ripened uh, using you know the carbide which is cancerous which is very very dangerous for you know he, you know from health perspective but do we have sufficient you know the ethylene chambers do we have sufficient you know the cold chambers so what happens when you know the especially in fruits the orchards are being taken on contract the contract contractors they never go for sustainable harvest or they never go for uh, you know proper kind of orchard management so there is a you know productivity loss also uh, year to year and farmers income is again decreasing so if there are you know, ethylene based uh, cold chambers in, you know, nearby, you know, all the mango clusters and papaya cluster, lychee cluster, so many fruits we are growing, banana, we grow best banana, we grow, you know, variety of mangoes and, and those are 
well known in entire globe uh, from Alfonso to Dasari to Langara. But, you know, if you look at the losses that are happening due to lack of these facilities, so we should think of, you know, these kind of facilities, both from, you know, the health hazard perspective and increasing farmers uh, income. Communication is again, again, a problem. As I said, you know, uh, farmers, they should take advantage of the digital world. They should know, you know, the prices of different Mondays. There should be a proper, uh, you know, although road infrastructure is improving a lot, but that is not sufficient. Again, I will say we need, you know, the system to transport from one place to another place. So <clears throat> that is all about infrastructure. If you look at, you know, uh, you know, the, the gap between, you know, the, the cold chains, you'll realize how far we need to go in terms of the cold chain in India to improve the, you know, uh, farmers, enhance the farmers income and decrease post harvest losses. How much time we have a uh, professor so that, you know, I, 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 I will, uh, uh, customize my discussion so that I, I don't go over time. I want to cover everything. You are on mute. Ample time and uh, you, you are explaining very effectively. Let the viewers get benefit out of it. Don't rush it. You have time. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So coming to the market. So there are macro pictures, there are micro pictures. I talked about you know, the micro pictures that farmers, they are not market ready. Appeals, they are not market ready. So farmers, they need to become APO ready and APO to become <clears throat> farmers ready. APO should, you know, have some, you know, uh, stickiness. Why farmers, being a farmer, I will sell my produce to APOs because I should get some advantage or I should have some, you know, uh, advantage over others when I sell it to a local commission agent or I know that I'm not getting a proper price, but still I prefer to sell that, that local aggregator because I know uh, whenever I will need some money uh, in the uh, off season, I'll get it. Maybe, you know, that may be, you know, the uh, rate of interest may be very high, but still being a farmer, I prefer to go to him. So what kind of services that APIO should uh, provide? So APIO should come up with a pain point and the gain point. They should uh, try to address the pain point and they should try to leverage the gain points so that there is a more stickiness for the APIOs, you know, for the farmers to remain uh, linked to APIOs. Why I, I suddenly talked about APIOs? Because if we want to solve the problem of the market, we need more and more APIOs. We need more and more collectives, maybe the self-help groups, maybe the producer enterprises, so many things. So, you know, there are so many cooperatives, as you uh, said earlier. So how, you know, they should be brought into this ecosystem to solve this market problem. Market wants a critical volume. So there should be a, a, a consistency in the quality and the quantity. It shouldn't happen that one time you are giving a truckload of material and and in 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 another time you're not able to, you know, meet uh, my demand. So that is happening. Why, you know, if you talk to any organized buyer, maybe, you know, any, any, you name any uh, big retail chain, e-commerce chain, everybody, they, they are rushing to buy it from farmers, the problem is the consistency in quality and quantity. So who will ensure consistency in quality and quantity? It's APOs, the collectives. But are these collectives ready? Because government has the, you know, has come up with 10,000 APO policy. But how this is going to happen on the ground? So that's a big, big question mark. Everybody's trying. I'm not, you know, uh, criticizing anyone. So from uh, you know, the agencies like NABAD to, you know, the NAFED and many uh, agencies, they are, uh, SFAC, they are, uh, you know, helping to form uh, the producer companies. <clears throat> but in terms of market readiness, so if you 
talk to anybody who was in a pure domain they'll say oh we are working on governance we are working on business plan but if you talk to them you know except the dairy part dairy you know the the appeals the odd appeals that you know the 7500 appeals uh, as per the ajim premji report so if you look at you know the except the dairy appeals very few appeals are making profit why because again i'll say the there's the lack of consistency in the quality and quantity so the strategy for appeal should be consistent profit and consistent growth and the market readiness of the appeals how that market readiness will come there should be a proper ecosystem that should be built around the appeal so that appeal can move from local market to regional market to national market to international market so there are different parameters for each market so when they are they, they are at the very uh, uh, emerging you know very nascent stage they should think of catering to the local market they should learn the marketing skill then they should move to the uh, regional or national market so again the regional national market they have the different set of uh, specification and and uh, those are located at the distance place so do they have the proper transportation facility do have the sufficient capital so that you know there will be a gap of the payment if you sell it to the organized buyers that take 15 to 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 even 45 days to pay off you know for the produce and or the fastest payment is until unless the produce is unloaded uh, at their go down they won't pay it to the farmers but farmers they need immediate cash who will bridge that gap so there are very few uh, uh, you know organizations those are working in this domain icart is one of them i think that is the first a fintech company they are bridging that gap bit, you know between the 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 apios and farmers and between apios and the buyers and in this way you know the the capacity of apios are increasing even they are financing you know the different uh, stakeholders in the value chain like the millers the exporters the retailers wholesalers distributors so that they can enhance their capacity to pull more and more produce from rural areas thereby strengthening the rural economy i can give you very uh, short example like you know in 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 case of maize they are purchasing maize they are giving to a feed company they they make you know the animal feed they are giving it to the farmers back to uh, you know the animal feed back to the farmers they are uh, using it in fish and goat rearing they are purchasing the fish from there and they are selling it in the market so you can solve the chain you know uh, the problem of the chain until you know uh, only when you work with all the stakeholders and and that's the work novel work that i you know icart is working they are they are working with with each and st- uh, you know every stakeholder they are protecting you know the the traditional smes because as you said there are 63 million uh, smes and and uh, majority of them are in the trade uh, and 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 53% are in rural areas so they are they can just imagine the quantum of uh, the money or the the uh, you know the percentage of the contribution they are making to uh, the uh, uh, gdp or the uh, rural economy so they need to be protected uh, 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 otherwise what will happen this value chain this you know will get disrupted and maybe this will you know again the small businesses will vanish and they are contributor of they are the largest contributor better of the country's gdp and the employer also in the country so people in the rural areas will we lose employment so i think from that perspective also this is very important to let you know to protect these smes <clears throat> you you look at the kind of export we we produce more we export less we need to increase the uh, the export again the fpo so how it it will happen you know <clears throat> and i always say in all the forums in meetings i say those startups or those companies will survive 
who will have a strong sourcing so it's not possible for a company or for a startup or for a private sector to deal with thousand farmers at a time so it's easier when they deal with you know the uh, uh, collectives apios uh, sgs it becomes very easy for payment for aggregation through collection centers so when again the apio will uh, try to cater the export market they'll have different uh, kind of specification there they need to coordinate more on uh, you know acquiring more and more value chain functions then only they can play in the market and being you know sometimes uh, being a, a social worker the development worker we always think from the uh, social perspective but as you said you know my previous mentor uh, mr kashyap he used to always say that always have a social heart and business mind so ngos also need to uh, think from that perspective that these apios are a kind of a startup a kind of company they'll have to behave like a company they cannot behave like a you know philanthropic organization because uh, uh, being a consumer i can purchase one time uh, from that uh, perspective but i'll not uh, go for you know the uh, multiple times buying you know the same uh, product from the apios they need to be competitive they need to compete in terms of the quality in terms of the pricing you know then only they can uh, survive in the market but that is not happening you see you know the the pace of farming apios and and what is happening to the old apios uh, you know especially the apcs they are getting notices from uh, different departments because lack of the compliances they are not even able to make uh, the the profit to you know cover their the uh, human resource cost their office cost their telephone other you know the operational cost so mm, when we form an apio we should think of the value chain which all value chain they will be involved which all activities they will be doing do apios need to diversify their business because if they deal only on a single crop so they'll be uh, uh doing business only for a season if the the commodity is bigger then they should think of acquiring more value chain functions like you know if they are dealing in tomatoes they should think of you know first doing job work for some puree or some companies who are making you know the chutneys or the ketchups uh, similarly in 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 mint they should think of other value chain functions like if they can make crystals they can make other you know uh flavor items which can which they can sell or for uh, you know the sake of you know the if we talk of uh, the vegetables can they go for cut vegetables they can they go for dry vegetables they can they go for frozen vegetables which has a high demand especially in you know horeca so the restaurants the hotels the dhabas they want you know the frozen items so that you know uh, the customers they don't wait much uh, Uh, sitting, you know, uh, in the restaurant, so that they can serve it uh, a tasty food uh, well on time. So that can happen when there is a more value addition. So that that is possible when there is a capital available to the APOs. There is a know-how available to the cap, uh, APOs. There is a technology available to the APOs. There is a, uh, you know, the selling platform, digital platform that is available to the APOs. And overall, there is, there should be some organization who can. provide them the hand holding support to take them to the market so that is a uh, apio piece then i'll come to the national brand you see you know what happened to amul amul is competing with the entire world the the brand like nestle and all they are competing well and pp that has become a brand you know consumer the the first demand is you know the the amul and that is you know that uh, that was possible you know due to the operation flood due to the investment due to you know all if you look at from the capital perspective from the technology perspective from the transportation perspective whatever i talked of so there has to be a brand like you know we can have a brand in peace mutter frozen mutter like safal is a brand is this becoming a brand so how can you know we can have brand in other vegetables that we are producing in abundant quantity 
though you know those vegetables and fruits which are very nutritious how that can become a brand like for kesar for alfonso can we have a national brand can we have a national brand for you know dashari can we have a national brand for you know the 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 uh, citrus uh, uh can we ha have a national brand for the manner millets because those are also become very popular because of the, the high nutritious value can we have a national brand for you know the cooking oil the mustard uh, the you know the soya bean sunflower so on and so forth so there is a need for a national level brand so that that organization or that company can solely be dedicated to those farmers who are into uh, production of that particular crop then you know the most problematic thing is with you know the the uh, farmers involved in production of fresh fruits and vegetables because of lack of specification they don't know what what is what all are you know the different specification for different market because when i started you know uh, i did one project in 2013 where uh, our farmers uh, farmer federation they used to supply to uh, some uh, good uh, branded stores so they had uh, mentioned some specification like you know the cabbage cauliflower should not uh, be more than 750 grams and the size should be this uh, it should be you know packed in the crates it should not be packed in gunny bags so on and so forth so there are a specification that farmers they should know what are those advantages if they in, invest in pesa what is the return on investment how, how much money they'll get more if they go for uh, you know the the uh, uh, you know uh, standardization grading cleaning packing so many things you know th those active you know initiatives they don't require much money but that require a lot of passion a lot of hand holding support to the farmers and ultimately a good extension services again for the market and <clears throat> last but not the least in this section the market information system that is lacking both for the policy makers for the ngos and for the farmers they are not aware of you know in most of the commodities they are not aware of what is you know the production what is the price in different mandis and how they can sell it you know digitally they can sell it over the phone and i think that will happen soon because many of the uh, fintechs like i card they are working on those lines and i think uh, uh, will be over, uh, able to overcome this problem of market now i'll come to the ecosystem and the policy <clears throat> everybody talks of ecosystem <clears throat> why ecosystem is very important ecosystem is because you provide everything from investment to capital to technology but if there is lack of coordination with, between ecosystem partners or if there is lack of conducive environment in the ecosystem then things will not move because we need a proper policy in place we need to integrate one ecosystem player with another ecosystem player i can give you very one small example recently uh icart partnered with uh, trif icart partnered with one company called distinct horizon they are into urea pellets so <clears throat> i icart is helping them to market that you know Uh, whereas that a uh, small startup they have the solution for a particular problem of leaching of more fertilizer consumption so you know this kind of integration this kind of partnership will solve a lot of problem because i know startups they have solution for a particular problem but they don't have the connect to the rural mass they have don't they don't have the connect with the farmer or farmer network of farmer collectives so how can that happen that can happen when the big programs like national rural livelihood uh, and other agricultural schemes that can converge that can partner with this uh, startups and they can you know help them to get connected with the farmers because 
if this startup they go with their own money the cost of services will be very high and i i fear they'll not be able to sustain in this current ecosystem so we need to integrate you know we need to you know uh, plan we need to uh, go for proper match making of the need and 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 the sub, the kind of supply you know these startups or kind of solution this startups are willing to provide as i said earlier also how this kvk is you know uh, you know the we need more and more organization like kvk is you know which can be equipped with latest know how latest technology and you know uh, you you see how government has solved problems with anganwadi uh, like you know uh, the anganwadi didis the anganwadi workers nm workers they distribute you know the iron tables uh, tablets calcium tablets they played a major role during the pandemic in the vaccination and and in the testing so why can't we have a kheti bari center like anganwadi center which can you know act as a you know the uh, farmer uh, uh, field school because if to address nutrition we have anganwadi why can't have a kheti bari which can you know coordinate with anganwadi to go for nutri agriculture which can be you know nutritious also and uh, farmers they have one stop solution from kheti bari center where they can get all the information they can get all the know how they can get connected to outside world maybe market maybe infrastructure or maybe you know the startups so we need a center like kheti bari in the villages to address this problem now i'll come to the untapped potential professor you talk much about you know the uh, different untapped potential but i'll mainly focus on uh, the the challenges or the observation which i had from last 20 years you know if we look at the our uh, diverse agro climatic zone more than 127 and the kind of soil the kind of water the kind of temperature we have everything we can produce everything and anything we can feed the world that is the potential that lies in our country so that is still untapped we should plan in such a way that you know all all uh, although government has come up with odop one district one produce so that is catering to some you know somehow that is catering to that problem but we should have a proper planning what is the consumption what is the marketable surplus that can be exported to outside world and we can feed the world and during you know uh, and still we are doing recently although government has banned the wheat uh, export but we were exporting wheat and there's a huge pressure on indian government to lift the ban because they know that india has the potential to feed the world so that is due to diverse agro climatic zone the diverse set of skills that our farmers have as i said we can grow everything and anything then i'll come to the digital space so you know there is a digital revolution especially you know prime minister is taking much interest he is he is working in a mission mode you know whether it's a mobile based technology whether it's a drone technology whether it's a irrigation technology whether whatever you say you know the, he is working on a mission mode so how this farmers can you know how the this ecosystem how this you know farmers they can they can use the untapped potential we they should move from you know the physical to digital they should think of you know the artificial intelligence uh, both for the consumers also sitting here if i want uh, apple uh, uh, from himachal or or from uh, jammu and kashmir i should sitting at my you know um, Uh, drawing room i can order it i can see it what is the quality of the apple i can see the traceability because the the uh, especially the europe and the us market they are stressing heavily on the traceability because many of the produce 
that are being sold in the name of organic they you know they are not really organic the farm you know the consumers you know feel cheated at the end of the day while they are willing to pay more but there should be a traceability thing although blockchain technologies are being used but the, those are limited to very uh, uh, limited commodities we need to broaden the horizon we we should think of those technologies how those technologies can be made affordable for uh, you know the farmers so that the uh, price of the produce doesn't you know get increased beyond the capacity of the consumers and for the export market we must think of the traceability we must think of uh, you know that can that can that is possible only when we think of the uh, artificial intelligence machine learning there are so many uh, you know uh, technology firms there are so many fintechs you know they have they are coming up with those kind of you know the ais and machine learning based technologies and and solving the problem of the farmers but again i said we need to bring more uh, commodities in the basket under this traceability thing again you the farming as a business uh, farming uh, that can only happen when farmers they keep their record that can only happen when they get educated that can only happen when they are taught what is business how that can be managed you know without management you know farming cannot become a business so management thing should be taught to the farmers how they should manage their you know the crop cycle how they should manage their land area how they should allocate different crop you know uh, to different uh, different acreage for different crops and what different varieties they should plan to realize better price in the market and overall the 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 community based organizations the ngos the social enterprises those who are working closely with the farmers the apos they can help in this uh, mission of making farming as a business until unless we think of farming as a business the farm income cannot increase and ultimately you know the benefit will not be percolated to the farm to the farmers to the community or to the you know to the rural economy so the, if you want to strengthen our rural economy farming has to become a business not a casual approach the now the apios i talked much about apios <clears throat> if you look at you know the current scenario of apios if you leave aside the uh, apios dealing in the dairy and dairy product so other apios they are mainly into aggregation and aggregation won't give them the dividend they won't give them sufficient margin they won't give them sufficient profit so that they can distribute it as a dividend to the to their member farmers so how that can happen so apios will have to think beyond the aggregation like if some apios they are into modern millets they should think of making cookies they can they should think of uh, going for uh, you know the cake you know we use in birthday and many celebration how we can make you know cake using the minor millets so that you know cake or the other foods that you know our children they are very fond of can be made out of this minor millet or the chapatis which we consume on a daily basis can be you know of minor millets so the apios will have to think on those lines like if they are selling raw cashews they should sell you know the processed cashews if they are selling you know the parchment coffee they should go for the processing they should go for the instant coffee if they are you know into uh, uh, you know producing maize if they are not able to realize better price how they can you know go for aflatoxin free maize how can how they can think of you know doing a job work to make a feed for fish make feed for goat or if they can grow maize you know that can be used for making corn flakes so those kind of value addition those kind of value chain functions they must take up if they want to make profit if they want to make you know if they want really the farmers to 
remain uh, uh, you know uh, what to say uh, if they want to create that stickiness for the farmers so that they remain connected throughout the year they are willing to sell their produce in a uh, uh, hope that when the IPO will make profit they'll get the return in terms of dividend and <clears throat> APOs should also think on those lines like, you know, uh, they're not, you know, still I said, you know, in, in last, uh, in my uh, previous slide, I said they are not considering themselves as a commercial organization. Like suppose APO should have the input shops and rather than, uh, you know, uh, uh, distributing the small dividend of 100, 200 rupees, they should think of giving them the coupons. Uh, the discount coupons, like if you purchase the input from the APO shop, you will get discount and you know, a purchase of this much of amount will get the coupons so that, you know, the footfall of the farmers can increase in those input shops. So one way they will make profit from the input shops and in another way, the, the farmers will have access to quality inputs, which is not happening. So you see, you know, what what is happening currently so uh, many of the uh, i'm not blaming anyone but in 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 most of the areas you know the input uh, retailers they prefer to sell you know the local products rather than the branded products which are very safe for the environment so how this in this ecosystem can be changed only when the apu also think themselves as a business entity not as a philanthropic organization so that can happen only when you know they behave like a company they uh, you know file their return on time they they prepare their balance sheet they think of how they can consistently make profit and they can uh, and um, they can ensure the growth so that if they grow their, their the share value of the farmers they'll increase uh, it will increase and farmers they will feel proud of getting associated with that fpo or with that fpc so that can happen only when some, you know, the NGOs, they are sensitized enough that look, this is not an, uh, a philanthropic organization anymore. Uh, we'll have to, you know, graduate from the philanthropy to, you know, the thinking in terms of the commercial uh, values. So that commercial value can come to the FPOs only when, you know, we change our mindset, we change the ecosystem and policies you know good policies are in place and there are organizations who can handhold these appeals there are you know the private sector can think of investing more and more in this uh, you know in appeals in back end infrastructure in you know in terms of you know supporting in terms of capital at affordable interest rate so that you know both can be in the win win situation the private sector can they get good return for their, you know, the investment in the equity and uh, or the debt and 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 uh, the APOs can make a, you know, good profit <clears throat> and can grow consistently. <clears throat> so the role of private sector becomes very important, especially, you know, when, you know, uh, we think of large scale impact, like, you know, uh, uh, startups, they're offering different product, the fintechs, they have a good digital platform. Like I talked of iCart, I'll, at the last slide, I'll be giving the example how they have integrated the value chain, how every every uh, stakeholder in this supply chain are increasing the volume of the business, making profit and also transferring you know, some part of the margin to the, to the farmers, giving less load to the farmers and uh, providing the support to the farmers to produce a better uh, uh, thing uh, and uh, the, the quality uh, produce and fetch a better price. So the role, you know, uh, and, and private sector also should, uh, rather than asking for the support from the government in terms of the money or resources, they should uh, negotiate with the government in terms of good policy, the conducive policy, so that they can also grow, they can also make money while investing in the agriculture. So I'll come to the uh, 
uh, practical solution, uh, Professor. So, as I said, we'll have to transit from cereals to high value crops. If you look at, you know, the, the previous slide, I'll go back to the slide. If you look at, you know, the uh, uh, slide, more than one can eat. So you see the, the, the trend, how uh, the consumption is declining and production of cereals is increasing. So we'll have to think of how we can transit from cereals to high value crops uh, provided we maintain that kind of uh, the government is able to maintain the buffer stock and ensure food security when i talk of high value crops it can be mint it can be you know the plant you know the agroforestry it can be you know uh, uh, the uh, sugarcane it can be the minor millets so many things and also the allied activities because land has its capacity so again i'll take you to one slide i'm just sorry it's gone somewhere so uh, uh, recently i read a report that uh, now the world has reached a maximum threshold level of land available for agriculture but still production is increasing so we should maintain how we can maintain that pace to feed the growing population so that can happen only when we bring technology we bring high value crops so that you know from that particular land there is a, as i said there's a limitation to it so if we want to increase the income of the farmers we should also think of the backyard poultry we can also think of the kitchen garden we can also think of goat rearing we can also think of the other livestock and uh, many one of my friend <coughs> uh, of goat trust they are doing excellent work in in uh, goat rearing so we need those kind of also startup uh, which 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 who are you know dedicated in a particular you know sector or sub sector and trying to uh, develop the entire sector the entire ecosystem so we you know uh, the allied activities those are very important you know uh, if farmer they're able to rear you know the poultry birds they can get income from eggs they can get income from the chicken meat uh, if they rear goat it is also called poor man's cow so they can sell it in case of emergency and uh, that goat can act as a atm anytime money for them and but how that will happen you know everything we cannot expect everything from farmers to do it there has to be some agency which can do it on the ground having you know the the dedicated human resource passionate human resource that is very important if we want our farmers to increase income then we'll have to think of other means of you know the farm income like you know as i said the mill, the other process, dairy product, the goat rearing, the uh, eggs, the poultry birds, ducks, fish, fishery. So everything needs to be integrated in a village so that the village economy uh, gets strengthened. And as I, as I said earlier, we need a Kheti Badi center in the village also. We call it Kheti Badi. We don't have any center in the village where they can get advisory, where they can get you know all the information so i should say it uh, you know this kheti body as a single window system a one stop solution for farmers and that can be run by either fpos or the agencies working in that area so that they can cater the need of the farmers they can you know provide the inputs at the doorstep of the farmers information you know through their mobile because every one doesn't have the mobile you know smartphone but every household has one smartphone so you know they can identify that person uh, that that opinion leader within household who can influence you know the system who, you know opinion leader in the village who can influence the ecosystem and opinion leader in the district state and national level because without leadership this cannot happen then physical to digital 
the the intervention is very important so if we see that uh, you know uh, i think uh, one 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 revolution that has come you know that this government has done is now everywhere will get the you know internet network so one thing has happened every household has a mobile now we need to think how we can develop a handy uh, app so that farmer feel you know interested to use it because many there are number of apps that are available in the market but farmers they don't use it this is our experience my experience working last 20 years there are apps but farmers they're not willing to use it because there's no entertainment there's no income so if they if we want farmers to use those apps we should have to think on the stickiness how they should go for those you know the usability of those apps so that farmers feel happy while using these apps and get the benefit out of it then raw selling to value addition uh, as i said most of the you know farmers they sell like they sell paddy not uh, the rice they sell uh, raw cashew not uh, the uh, processed cashew even we have seen there are technologies those are available for cashew apple the cashew apple has a very high nutritious value and kerala university they have the technology of ma- making beverages uh, out of that those cashew apples but that is not happening why those those things are not happening because it needs capital it needs technology dissemination and it needs a proper planning to launch it in the market under a good brand so if the private sector comes in you know the 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 value addition thing will become easier for farmers for apios and for this ecosystem so those kind of investment come from the far private sector partners they can do it in a partnership with the apios and that is very much possible <clears throat> rather you know uh, one problem that i forgot to mention that apio you know the the how apio is differentiated especially apc is differentiated from other companies that everyone every farmer has one voting right irrespective of number of shares they have and only producer can become the member of that apio so how we can ensure the equity investment in the apio that can happen only when we have a market facing company when we when we have a federation of apc or when we have a umbrella organization which can incubate this apios bring investment and those can happen in collaboration with universities with private sector because universities are also needed in terms of the academics because because without academia this is not possible without private sector investment uh, things cannot go uh, <clears throat> forward so we need to have a incubation center <clears throat> in you know which can be in the form of market facing companies who can incubate you know the apios can they take the apios from a very nascent stage to market stage where apios become profitable they can apios can be provided the seed money apios can be provided technology apios can be provided all the uh, you know the uh, the needed items that that is required for doing a business and the academic institutions they can conduct research they can come up with you know all the value propositions all you know the learnings of the past or the learnings of the you know, particular interventions or the best practices that is happening around the country so that this in you know this market facing company can disseminate across you know the entire sector and this market facing company can also be a national brand can also be a for, for particular value chain so this is need of the r and i think this is the best way we can solve the problem now i'll come to the input shops <clears throat> although there are licenses required for selling inputs like the seeds fertilizers and chemicals but <clears throat> it has been observed that the the retailers sitting in the remote areas they are not selling the good uh, and safe materials to the farmers or good planting materials <clears throat> to the farmers what is happening in the potato farmers they get cheated in the name of potato seed they are being given you know the 
table potato as a seed and you know the germination is very low they don't they are not able to harvest a good uh, um, potato a, you know the good yield but you'll be you know surprised to know that the central uh, you know international center for potato cip they have a very good technology where the cost of seed can be brought down from rupees 35 to rupees 10 and this technology can be transferred to fpos simple infrastructure is needed they are ready to provide the technology so we again as i said the ecosystem we need to integrate it into this potato ecosystem so that farmers they get a good potato seed they can harvest a good yield they can you know increase their income so there are simple things that that should happen but who will you know do it in my latter slide you will see how complex is matchmaking how complex is co-creation it's very simple to say it's a you know one word co-creation but it's very difficult at the field field and but this is need of the hour <clears throat> so then individual to collectives <clears throat> so now government uh, is doing excellent work of promoting appeals and recently i saw that SSGs are as are also transiting from you know as a credit and thrift group as a saving group to a business entity i recently attended one uh, uh, workshop in i am lucknow i saw you know how they want their they intend to help the SSGs to incubate as a business entity so we need to change our mindset we need to change our thinking process uh, if you want farmers or the individuals to make money to make profit so you'll have to behave like a market what market demands because we market will not behave what we want because market works on certain principles like law of supply and demand and making many micro and macro uh, you know variables uh, those in, you know affect the the nature of the market so rather than changing market we should change ourselves to so that we can make market work for these poor farmers then i have already said about supply and demand uh, uh, but you know rather than having you know the supply driven and uh, approach we should think of the demand driven what that particular mandi or that particular local market demand how much is the quantity demanded what is that quality that is demanded and then if farmers they go back and do their homework and produce accordingly i think they will be able to fetch, fetch a better price so we need to transit from supply driven to demand driven i have already talked about you know the farming as a business then climate you said a lot about climate i didn't uh, purposefully i didn't put it in my problem statement because this is a vast topic if you start speaking about the climate change the impact of climate change in agriculture that will take an entire day but let me tell you one thing very frank frankly the small and marginal farmers they are really uh, you know being impacted due to the climate change because the erratic rainfall the the uh, the temperature is going very high and they're not able to manage you know they're not able to harvest what they intend to harvest despite of the fact that they put their best effort they put the best seed best technology but again climate is becoming a big hurdle for them then what we should do under such circumstances we should think of climate smart agriculture what are there are ways which you know uh, there are practices which can help these farmers to mitigate majority of the climate related uh, problems like you know if they go for you know the climate smart agriculture you know there are practices rather than using you know the chemicals they go for organic practices rather than uh, going for fully chemical they can think of mixed approach rather than you know taking a particular crop which is you know being destroyed year after year they should think of uh, taking those crops selecting those crops which can thrive in that particular temperature or they can think of sowing you know or transplanting in 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 the month where you know 
they it 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 is aligned with the rain or it is aligned with the temperature because earlier in 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 up and in the north india we used to get rain by 15th of june now it has gone beyond you know we get it in july and it keeps on raining uh, till september so just think of how crop get uh, destroyed you know there has there's a aflatoxin problem higher aflatoxin problem in groundnut due to high moisture there is problem you know of of you know um, uh, the crops like potato getting destroyed due to heavy rain you know crops are getting flooded and farmers they are not able to harvest it even they burn it in the field they prefer to burn it in the field because they know that they will not um, able to recover the harvest they intend to even we are we have changed the variety we are not getting a proper fodder i said uh we need to go for the allied activities but how it will happen do we have uh, the sufficient fodder to feed our animals no we don't have we are using combined harvester to harvest our field and and the fodder is not available for our animals farmer you know cannot you know uh think of keeping you know animals uh as they used to uh, do it you know the uh, earlier days where they used to get feed and fodder everything from uh, his farm or her farm but now they'll have to think of you know they'll have to buy the feed and fodder from the market and that becomes very unviable many a times until unless they have a sufficient number of animals because keeping one or two animals won't solve their problems because then the economy of scale will not fit into their uh, business so that's why you know they are quitting that you know they are not keeping livestock because of these problems i personally when i visit my village i see you know we had three and you know the one buffalo two cows uh, today when i you know recently i visited my village i saw there's no animal that you know uh, the shed is lying you know defunct uh, and uh, uh, you know my relatives in villages they are buying milk from the market even they're buying buying many things from the market my grandfather used to say if farmer is buying you know uh, is uh, buying anything other than kerosene oil and salt then he will not be a prosperous farmer so i used to laugh at that time you know is it possible but yes that was possible in those times where farmers they had everything in their villages now everything has become on a cash basis and now but that is the changing scenario that is changing world changing demand so changing you know the the uh, buying uh, propensity the buying behavior so everything is changing so i should not say that he should not farmer should not buy from the market but he should be self sufficient like at least the milk the egg at least he should have their nutritious food that can be grown in you know from his field only so that he invest less on you know uh, um, uh, he has more marketable surplus he has more money in his pocket is he has more saving so that he can use it for a better education better accessing better health services and other things for his family uh nutrition again i did not keep this in my problem statement this is also you know there is a high incidence of malnutrition uh, everywhere not only in the rural areas but in the urban areas why because we have changed our food habits we never thought of you know the balanced diet we never thought of you know how what kind of life we are leading whether it's a sedentary or uh, <clears throat> what kind of uh, you know uh, uh, system we have so uh, there is high stunted growth there is a high mortality you know uh, of children in the country so how we can address this this can happen only when the agriculture is nutrition sensitive more and more minor millets you see my slide how you know there is a 1% land in the, in the minor millet uh, where is that Sorry, I'm taking some time. Just... Yeah, yeah, that's true. It is. 
ecosystem and this is possible when there is a very good facilitation from the ngos there is a good human resource good partners good partnerships and thought leadership you know the persons like the professor moni and others uh, they they take interest in the agriculture and help you know th- through his academic research how you know this match making can happen digitally now it's no more physical so it 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 will become very easy for you know if we think of from academic perspective if we make it digitally so just think of the how you know each of the factor and actor there are two two uh, things in this slide one is factor one is actor how factors is linked to the actors how actors can be linked to the factors so this is very important how you know best you can make the match between the actors and factors that will decide how best you can co create for the better impact which can be shared by both you know all the stakeholders in the ecosystem so that is possible when we think creatively so sorry why this is not coming i think uh, yeah that is okay you can you can so just that is the all uh, uh, professor i think why this is not happening now i will ask mr manish to run it just one minute i will send it to him okay 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 just okay. one minute just one minute i will send it to him Mr. Manish, Mr. Manish. Yes, sir. I'm downloading the file, sir. Okay. That the last but one slide, you just uh, run it. I'm just just just. I spoke too much. I wanted to show that. No, no, it's it's not, not too much. much. It is it is very important that. Uh, you have covered almost um, uh, every aspect which uh, uh, you know you, you you know you covered you know it is very important uh, so okay it's, it's doing it. yeah make it full slide make it full slide make it full screen yeah. just play it yeah not happy. previous one previous previous one so it is not showing on uh, the ppt sir okay there must be some some problem around it okay so these are technological glitch it happens <laughs> it is is very important that uh, you are uh, you know you brought it in uh, uh, just one minute see the the points which you covered even though you covered about 10 slides but you have spoke for more than one and a half hours you know it is it's it's really an untapped potential because nobody in any conference or any discussion or any brainstorming session has that has the patience even to talk 
and uh, today you know i felt so happy in the sense that you put it you know if i i wanted to uh, you know for the benefits of the participants i wanted to you know tell very clearly that you know the last part one you talked about approach match making and core creations is it all network it is a cobwebs it's a spider network but the thing is that all the points which you need it is that the actors and factors it's very important and uh, you know i talked about you have government you have cold chain partners you have private sector you have processes you have startups you have farmers farmer producers investors and ngos then you know that you know with respect to aggregation create conducive ecosystems value addition technology forming as a business integration of value addition produce what market demand and infrastructure this is where a hardcore technocrat not even having an agricultural science as a discipline after working at the grassroots level for the last 35 40 years i realized that this is more important so how the you know higher educational institution you know also become a part of the value creation in the indian economy indian agrarian economy it's very important we can't just leave it to that to the ministry of agriculture state department of agriculture district agriculture block level agriculture officer and then is the minuscule but there are 14.5 crore operational holders the number is huge it is a ocean and we have to and we have 715 kv case you know even a small country like israel you said it 250 farmers per you know uh, extension professional and we have to and we have to have so many skill set development centers not merely 7, 715 krishi vigyan kendras are atma centers agriculture technology management agencies in district one plus one they are you know under staff because of the not filling up by post by the state government and whoever is responsible for that the thing is that today the situation has warranted war situation created pandemic situation arrived agriculture is the only solution for the people to live to exist in the country all the other things have become secondary and tertiary issues not the primary issue like a primary sector has become a primary life saving you know uh, you know uh, commodity for the public throughout the world and this is where india can bring in like german has brought in industry 4.0 and japanese has brought in society 5.0 but india can give it to the whole world agriculture 4.0 and 5.0 and so on and so forth and uh, we can produce what the you know uh, world wants provided provided we have we we are ready to untap the potential we are ready to work together we are trying to you know remove all the silos and we are trying to work as the, uh, the our actors, our assets are farm and farmer. Farm and farmer are the two assets. And the digital asset we have to create. We have to convert a farmer and farm as a digital asset and facilitate. And this is where today, Mr. Amit, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Amit Singh Ji, that you talked about that, you talked about, you know, that uh, how IACART is now bringing out that a solution for bringing in traditional, you know, bringing in, strengthening the traditional business for agricultural value chain by giving finance and technology solutions and so on and so forth. And they're all existing, but we can't allow them to die. We have to transform, transform, transform through digital technology. It's very important. And I'm very happy that this is where that, you know, that, you know, your talk, has strengthened our you know issue that is a resolved issue our confirmation that you know this untapped potential is if it is tapped i think rural india will show the way for the whole world if not for india or 
for India as well as for uh, for urban India as well as for the whole world. And you are given various points and also action plan. The action plan you said it that you know very clearly that um, the that we need to have an ecosystem and policy. Government NGOs private sectors are working in silos and with the different goals with the different goals that's the reason only the doubling forwards income committee report in the digital technology section chapter you know you know it is chapter 10 it talked about very clearly that we have to adopt the seven mission mode programs for total digitalization of agriculture system in the country and i'm able to map that the seven mission mode programs with what you are doing it, what your company is doing it, and what the Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology through its centers of excellence want to do it. And the thing is that, and then you said that some good work is happening around this sector, but scale up is not possible. Scaling is not taking place that. Everybody wants to reap the, you know, top level grass. And you also talked about, you know, good input is not available. And then the thing is that we should produce what the market wants. And, uh, you know, that, you know, that we are producing and productivity is not there. And how to increase the productivity, how we can produce for the whole world and how we can produce what the whole world wants. And, the, and then the problem of MSMEs are not being addressed properly. Their ecosystems are being disturbed because of no, uh, absence of support. There is an absence of data system and information system. I have been working vigorously for the last 35, 40 years. A single man voice is never heard of, but as a technocrat, as a scientist, I'm not a pessimistic man. I thought that this can come. When we talked, when we were talking, there was not much technology, but today, and that time we talked about information systems, but today technology is available, but people are not talking about information systems. We don't have a comprehensive village level information system in the country. We don't know that what village can do, produce, why, what were they producing 50 years back and why it is not producing for the last 20 years and why the block level agriculture officers and block level, you know, uh, functionaries and district level functionaries are not, you know, performing. And, and why we are not able to sell what is being produced in the district, why it is being thrown out. And this is somewhere that the politics has to be kept up of agriculture. It is, it is you know, the, the politics, if it is there in agriculture, then the market produce will come on the road. You will buy shoe from the, you know, shopping center, but you will buy fish from the you know, area where it will be being sold from the near the very drainage. And the simple thing is you can see the Gasipur fish mandi in capital, national capital. If you visit, you can't even buy fish. And you very nicely said it that we have to have a national brand, trademark. And uh, like Hamul, you know, you know, like, uh, you know, that, you know, we were able to, when there was a problem with the dairy industry problem in 1945-46. How the farmers in the Gujarat, farmers from that particular area, they were able to form dairy cooperatives on the advice of Sardar Patel and Moraji Desai at that time. And how the you know the dairy value chain were built up and with the Dr. Korea. Now there have been a lot of talks which is which we have organized in this webinar series that. Why can't we have for all perishable commodities? Why don't we have is, is a and the model of what Dr. Korean has introduced 45 years back? Why we are not learning from the best practices which we adopted? Why we want to work on only on silos more? The time has come. Lessons have been lessons have to be learned, not lessons has to be passed off. But today's your talk is very important, and you also given lot of uh, suggestions and i'm very happy about it and the thing is that and uh, you know and you also said it there is a mismatch between intrastate 
and central and state government policies. I don't know why it is happening. And the thing is that that's why we have to, with this university, we thought that let us work for one commodity value chain per district and train the rural youths. Youths are the future because we can't train the, you know, the people who are aging. They are doing the traditional farming. And that's the reason only these five centers of excellence producing M-Tech in agricultural informatics, B-Tech in agricultural informatics, PG Diploma in Agricultural Informatics, MBA in Agribusiness Management, and Informatics and E-Governance, and Industry 4.0 Technology Studies for MSMEs, and so on and so forth. And uh, I would like to hear from you, Mr. Uh, uh, Amit, uh, Amitji, that how closely we can work together and bring capital, human capital, capacity building, competency building, and operationalize using ICOT as a case tool, use case to train the people and then bring in this agriculture commodity value chain digitalized. And I gone through your, you know, you know, the, the animation program, which is available in your website. It is so beautiful. It is very meaningful and it has to be operationalized. And that should make the way for establishment of 2.25 lakh agri startup that is one startup in every gram panchayat in the country. This has to be, this is what I told when there was a meeting with our honorable agricultural minister and honorable you know, defense minister in the house of defense minister's house on October 15 or 16, 2020, in the midst of the farmers' strike. I was invited among one of the 15 experts. I told them that. When there was a farm, when there was not farm law, I was promoting IT and agriculture via operationalized projects. Now there is a recommendation of doubling farmers' income for digital technology and agriculture. You have three farm laws. With the three farm laws and the seven mission mode programs, the country can generate 2.25 lakh agri-tech startups, one for each gram panchayat to help 14.5 crore farmers operational holders and this has to be done but unfortunately due to other uh, other you know security reason that our honorable prime minister he said it very clearly that for the benefit of the small and marginal farmers he brought the farm laws but for the for the security in mind i'm withdrawing the three farm laws and we have to respect his statement but our our journey for making digitalized agricultural economy is is the top priority we have to make all our farmers as globalized globally enabled and they should become a part and parcel of the global value chain that's why i thought that i should read out i should i, I read out the the salient features of the ilo report fao report and the un un desa report and very important that it is the rural youths are the future for agriculture and they should be trained on technology and this is where that this university is doing it and let us work together and through a memorandum of understanding and your vast experience which you have given it and how we can bring india to provide to the whole world agriculture 4.0 for a last word, Mr. Amit Amitji, and then I will close the webinar and we will leave the studio. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, you, you would definitely like to uh, partner uh, with your esteemed organization, and uh, we can together we can solve many problems, but not all all the problems. But we can do wonders uh, with our experience and your experience. Let us leverage the potential of each other and complement each other's work so that we can you know move ahead in this mission of doubling farmers income and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak and also i'm thankful for those scholars you know uh, who did a good work uh, especially you know there was an article in india today i used some of their analytics and i got some of their data uh, so I'm really very thankful to them uh, and remain so. 
in future and look forward to uh, having more and more such kind of discussions in the future so thank you very much thank you very much with this i would like to close the webinar and i thank honorable chancellor he was not able to participate today and we will have a separate meeting with him i think since the nac yeah, you know uh, visit is likely to take place in the university so he's very busy with that he sent a separate message and he, we will have a separate meeting when the nac visit is over and uh, thanks to the chancellor and also thanks to the vice chancellor and the faculty members and uh, i'm very much thankful to mr amit kumar singh our today's guest speaker for delivering and very wonderful very important with a lot of insights on the topic and tap the potential for growth co-create solutions to realize gains for farm farms households and communities let us take a pilot project one block in every state sure show that how this is can be scale up one commodity value chain and it's very important and uh, and also i would like to thank mr manish chabra without his support today program would not have been you know feasible to have conduct without any disturbance thank you very much mr manish chabra and uh, we'll meet next week you know at the same time to you know talk to you know all the participants and uh, thank you very much and we will close the webinar and leave the studio thank you very much thank you very much for your participation and greeting from sobit university for more research inquiries please contact professor moni maraswamy professor emeritus and chairman center for agricultural informatics and e governor research studies and center for agri business and disaster management studies and former director general national informatics center government of india new delhi my email id is moni@sobitinversity.ac.in thank you very much have a nice day